Hey guys, back here at Scientist here. First of my name, Master of House Disaster, Destroyer of Watermelons and Breakers of... Uh, sorry, I got carried away. Anyway, I'm still pretty amped up from watching the series, the final ending of Game of Thrones. Uh, I particularly enjoyed the giant ballista on the ship. I liked it so much, in fact, that I decided to make one for myself. Check it out. Let's get started. We started off by building the base and the bracket to hold the giant 6 inch by 6 inch body of the bow. The bracket will let me aim the bow up and down and side to side, and then to secure the aim that I want, I made this giant pin so I can just kind of crank it down and hold the bow in place. And that was the easy part. Now it's time to put the giant head on the bow. This weighs about 55 pounds and it's completely made out of quarter inch steel plate. And this is what's gonna hold the arms to the bow. These are the arms to the bow and they attach like this with these mounting plates to hold everything nice and steady. I made the arms out of leaf springs from a truck. I went to a junkyard and I pulled out these leaf springs and it was a real pain in the butt to cut them up, let me tell you. All right, now I'm going to be making the bow out of this special rope. It's made out of ultra high molecular weight polyethylene and it's supposed to be super strong. I mean, this says it can hold 3,900 pounds. The problem about it is it's kind of slippery. So what I'm going to try to do is just hammer this little ferrule shut and it hopefully we'll have enough force to clamp down on the rope and hold it onto the arms of the bow. The first thing I wanna do is test out exactly how hard it is to pull this thing back. So I have a scale right here and I have a GoPro and the GoPro is going to be transmitting the information live to my phone so I'll be able to see the numbers on it. We're gonna pull it all the way back and see how much this thing weighs. I'm gonna be hiding behind a tree over there in case one of these arms snaps. I don't wanna be anywhere near it, all right? I started hearing some stuff creaking, so I don't think I want to go any farther back than that. Now I like to think that I'm pretty strong, but this thing has a 1,000 pound draw and I'm not going to be able to pull this back. So we're going to be using this winch, so all I have to do is press a button. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a hard button to press. Alright, so it's time for the first test and I think you know what it's already going to be. That's right, it's a watermelon and I also cooked up a special tip for this arrow. It's like a giant steel broadhead made out of quarter inch steel plate. It's just like the ones that they used in Games of Thrones, so we'll see if we can take down a watermelon with this. Um, you might want to move, Sandra. Oh. <laughs> Three, two, one. Oh, I missed it. Did you hit the table? This time we're using the medium-sized arrow and just see what happens. Maybe I'll hit it this time. Three, two, one. Nailed it! Check that out. Boom. Right through, just like that. Well, I thought I nailed it at first, but once I look at the high speed, you can notice that it hits the uh, table too, and I think that takes a lot of energy out of the arrow because this thing should go right through the watermelon. Hit it on my uh, second <coughs> shot. Don't worry about why the table's got a bunch of holes in it. But I hit it. Nice. I guess now we can move on to something a little bit... Uh, harder, would hmm. you say? Yeah. I never really explained how I'm triggering this thing, but it's pretty simple. This is the trigger that I'm using. It's a very simple mechanism. I'll show you a clip of how it works right here. You can see that when I pull this cam back, it kind of forces this lever to go down and it releases this spinny thing, which releases the arrow. And this is how I set the whole thing up. So I have the trigger here. It goes in this long slot. So it's a little bit deeper than the arrow. And then you basically push the string up onto here. So it's like that. Use the winch to pull it back. Then all you have to do is pull this lever and is released. All right, the next one is going to be a tough target for sure. Let's see if we can break it because we're shooting a cinder block wall. Let's see what happens. So these are the arrows that we're using. We have the big one, the medium one, and the small one. So we'll see which one performs the best. Now, if you look at them, this right here is a stainless steel fletching on the back of the arrow and a heavy mild steel penetrator tip. They're a little bit heavier than wood, but I still think that they will be the perfect match for our giant scorpion. Three, two, one. Whoa! Three, two, 
That seriously did some damage. Oh man, I hope it didn't damage the GoPro too. Hi GoPro. Come, come look at this. It, there's just a trail of dust back there. <laughs> I am shocked this thing is still standing. I can't like, believe it. By like a hair. Wow. I mean, it seriously just destroyed that cinder block. That's really impressive. And this is a heavy arrow. This thing must weigh two pounds easy. We've been shooting this scorpion and it seems like it's really, really powerful, but how fast is it shooting exactly? Well, we can find out by doing this. I have two black marks here and this is exactly one foot apart. So we're gonna fire this thing in slow motion to see how fast it goes. So firing without an arrow, this thing crosses the two black lines in 10 frames, which means that it's traveling at 150 feet per second. Now with an arrow on it, the speed is reduced to around 107 feet per second, which is about 75 miles per hour. All right, we've reset the cinder block wall and my brother is going to give it his own shot to try to take down the castle. Think you can do it? I think I can do a better job than you. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> So here we go, we just take the arrow like this, put it right in there, it's good to go. I'm gonna go hide and we'll set up the slow motion camera, let's do this. Let's do it. Ready? Maybe a little bit more. All right. Oh. Okay. Great. All right. Three, two, one. Whoa, ho, ho, ho. That was a great shot. He hit that thing right in the center and the thing just exploded. It totally crumbled. So I would say that he beat me with that shot, but I'm gonna try one more. I am the older brother after all. All right, so that hit right in the center was pretty good, but you know what? I think that if I hit it right on one of the weak spots, it would go through both sides of the cinder block. So I'm gonna try that out now using the big arrow. Yes! That was awesome! <laughs> so yeah, that that uh that was pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the bigger arrow is definitely better. Definitely. What does it look like on the high speed? So here's what you gotta do now. Let's check it out. I knew it was possible. Boom boom. Through and through both sides of the cinder block and it turned it into dust. That big arrow is definitely an improvement. Another thing I kind of want to mention is you notice how the arms of this bow have a slight taper to them. They're thicker at the base and skinnier on the top. And this is because if I left them all one constant width the whole way down, when you bend it back, you'd really only be bending this part of the spring and all of this would just be extra dead energy at the end of the bow. So if you taper it, it allows the spring to store all of the energy throughout the whole curve of the spring. That's why in bows, in normal archery, you always have the taper from bottom to top or from width getting like width to the top will change. I just wanted to mention that because how I did it was kind of sketchy. I used a plasma cutter to cut it. And if you heat up spring steel too much, you're going to destroy the temper and make it brittle and it won't work anymore. So I used a hose and I sprayed water on the underside of the metal arm while I cut it with a plasma cutter so it wouldn't destroy the temper of the spring. Instead of tapering the arms of the bow, I could have just added more leaf springs that would kind of simulate the same effect. So I could have had another leaf spring that goes out to here and then another one that goes to here. And that would kind of simulate the tapering of this, how it is in a normal car. But that would just be such a high draw weight. I think it would really, literally tear this thing apart. For this next one, we're bringing back out the giant broadhead arrow because we're going to be shooting those motorcycles. No, we're going to be shooting these fire extinguishers. So hopefully I can get it to hit right like that blast up both of them. I've got them tied up with this high strength cord right here. So hopefully if they do explode, they won't go rocketing across the neighborhood. They will just get wrapped up around here without doing anything crazy. Well, uh -huh. let's try it. Now I'm nervous. Wow. This thing is kind of hard to aim. I missed the fire extinguisher. Well, actually I hit it, but it was right on the hose. Maybe I'll have better luck next time. This time I really hit the fire extinguisher, but it was up top and nothing broke. Maybe third time will be the charm. What do you say, Riley? Third time's the charm? Definitely. Was awesome!
Awesome, we nailed it perfectly. That was exactly what I wanted to happen. Check that out. Boom. Nothing went through the other side though, right? No, it didn't go through, it just hit it. Stuck in for a second, bounced off. It, it might have actually gone all the way through if we didn't have the broadheads on it. It might have. And I'm glad that thing held on there because that thing was taking off like a rocket in slow motion. Oh my god. Oh, was it? Was, it? it was spiraling. You gotta see it. Wanna see it? Oh yeah, I really nailed it that time right in the center of the fire extinguisher. And I love watching the arms after I shoot the bow. They still just wiggle back and forth forever. And there it is, the impact, and you can see that thing taking off like a rocket. That is really cool. Anyway, that thing sent out a lot of dust, so why don't we take a break for a second while we wait for the dust to settle. So we've been talking about Game of Thrones, and Audible is sponsoring this video, so I think you guys know where I'm going with this. Yes, the series is over, but the story goes on. Get your first audiobook for free, plus two Audible originals when you try Audible for 30 days. So yeah, you can get a free audiobook of your choice when you go to audible.com slash backyard or text backyard to 500 500. That's pretty cool. Even though Game of Thrones was a great TV show, you know how those TV adaptations can go. They often leave out a lot of information from the main stories. Like for example, in one of Bran's visions, he sees some dragons in a faraway land. So maybe Daenerys' dragons weren't the last one of their kind after all. There's all sorts of other prequels and world building histories and the Game of Thrones series available as audiobooks on Audible. And hey, if you're not a Game of Thrones fan, that is fine. Audible has a huge selection of audiobooks, anything you could ever want, and Audible has this new thing called Audible Originals, which is basically exclusive audio titles narrated by familiar voices and celebrated storytellers. Be sure to check out audible.com, and speaking of dragons, we have a dragon problem of our own in Florida that I need to go take care of. It doesn't look like much of a problem to me, it's just standing there. Yeah, standing there menacingly. Run, Sandra! Ah! Well, I hit that dragon and it's badly injured, so I gotta go finish it off. There it is. See, now that's what's supposed to happen when you shoot a dragon. They explode. Well, I'd say our dragon problem is solved, but our forest fire problem is starting. Well, that's the end of this video, guys. That ballista is awesome. I love it. Me and my brother spent all week making it, so thank you a lot for helping me. Anytime. I... That thing was a huge <laughs> blast to shoot, at least. It really is. It'll probably be in some more videos, so if you guys have any ideas, put them down in the comments below. And that's it. See you guys next time. Bye. Next time.